Hello everyone and welcome back to my new video. Today in this video I'll tell you about nanotechnology. You are watching Quaint Tech HD and now let's get in this video. Synopsis Nanotechnology is a field of research and innovation concerned with building things. Generally, materials and devices on the scale of atoms and molecules, a nanometer is a one billionth of a meter. A nanometer is one billionth of a meter, ten times the diameter of hydrogen atom. The diameter of a human hair is, on average, 80,000 nanometers. At such scales, the ordinary rules of physics and chemistry no longer apply. For instance, materials' characteristics such as their color, strength, conductivity, and reactivity can differ substantially between the nanoscale and the macro. Why Nanotechnology? Nanotechnology is hailed as having the potential to increase the efficiency of energy consumption, help clean the environment, and solve major health problems. It is said to be able to massively increase manufacturing production at significantly reduced costs. Products of nanotechnology will be smaller, cheaper, lighter, yet more functional and require less energy and fewer raw materials to manufacture. Six Essential Products and Developments of Nanotechnology Number 1. Carbon Nanotube Body Armor Functional bulletproof materials are essential for law enforcement officers and military personnel who are at high risk of facing gunfire. Bulletproof West disperse a bullet's force across a larger area than the point of impact preventing it from penetrating the wearer's body. Nanotechnology is currently being tested as an effective means of enhancing traditional bullet-resistant materials, like Kevlar. While Kevlar may stop a bullet from penetrating, a large amount of energy still transfers to the wearer, causing blunt force trauma. Steel or ceramic plating has been used to counter this in the past, but engineers have found that introducing nanoscale carbon tubes into Kevlar materials is another way to bolster its ability. That is to prevent blunt trauma from bullets and blades. Number 2. Surface Protection Materials Nanosurface protection materials use nanomaterials to create ultra-thin protective layers that fortify surfaces to which they are applied. Nanorepel is a product that uses a fine coating of pure quartz glass which is resistant to temperature and corrosive materials to enhance surface flexibility and elasticity and prevent stress damage. Number 3. Solar Panels Solar power allows people to harness electricity from the sun without directly creating waste. But the process of creating solar cells is energy intensive and can produce large amounts of waste. Photovoltaic solar cells are made using layers of expensive crystalline silicon that are treated using caustic chemicals. So researchers have been searching for ways to lower the cost of producing efficient solar cells. The grad cell cell which uses a layer of material coated with highly porous titanium dioxide nanoparticles as a surface material instead of silicon. It's also less expensive to produce. Nanoscientists are developing new techniques to precisely tailor the smallest particles of food to provide a specific taste, texture, and nutrient density. For instance, if a company wants to make its mayonnaise thinner, it could replace a portion of the fat content of each particle of mayonnaise with water content. Some companies are researching ways to improve perishable product packaging using nanotechnology engineering. SAB Miller, a beer brewing company, incorporates flaky clay nanoparticles in its plastic beer bottles. These tiny clay particles fill up more space up in the walls of the bottle than plastic nanoparticles. Number 5. Transdermal Patches Transdermal administration delivers a solution into the bloodstream through an individual skin. Transdermal patches typically deliver a specific dosage of medication after being placed onto a person's skin, allowing patients to avoid painful injections and gastrointestinal complications caused by ingesting the medicine. Until recently, the medications that could be administered via transdermal patches have been limited to those who have molecules small enough to penetrate the skin. Nanotechnology engineers are exploring ways that micro needles, small needles ranging in size from 100 to 1000 micrometers long, can be incorporated into transdermal patches to solve this problem. Number 6. Bandages Bandages are normally applied to protect wounds from further contamination. 
when engineers are now studying new ways to enhance their antimicrobial properties using nanotechnology engineering. Incorporating noble metals which have natural antimicrobial properties into bandages has been proven to help combat bacterial infections. Since silver disrupts the growth of bacteria by blocking its metabolism, engineers have developed ways to create bandages with silver nanoparticles woven into them. These bandages are commonly used to dress injuries that are resistant to treatment and prone to infection, like burn wounds. Nanotechnology allows people to alter materials at their most basic level. Organic and inorganic products can be improved using this technology, but it takes an advanced education to gain an actionable understanding of the fundamental aspects of nanoscience. Nanotech Engineering and Future Advancements As nanotechnology engineering evolves, it will continue to transform how scientists research and produce new materials at the molecule level. In the future, researchers expect products that use nanotechnology to drive advancement in areas such as sustainability, medicine, and robotics. For example, scientists can use nanotechnology engineering to create drugs that target specific cells in the body or build materials that can grow artificial organs. Nanotechnology can also be used to improve sustainability and access to natural resources with inventions such as molecular water filtration and self-cleaning materials. What about nanotechnology in the developing world? In the developing world, Brazil, Shil, China, India, the Philippines, South Korea, South Africa, and Thailand have shown their commitment to nanotechnology by establishing government-funded programs and research institutes. Researchers at the University of Toronto Joint Centre for Bioethics have classified these countries as frontrunners. In addition, Argentina and Mexico are up-and-comers, although they have research groups studying nanotechnology, their governments have not yet organized dedicated funding. What are the potential benefits for developing countries? Nanotechnology holds the promise of new solutions to problems that hinder the development of poor countries, especially in relation to health and sanitation, food security and the environment. In its 2005 report entitled Innovation, Applying Knowledge and Development, the UN Millennium Project Task Force on Science, Technology and Innovation wrote that nanotechnology is likely to be particularly important in the developing world because it involves little labor, land or maintenance. It is highly productive and inexpensive. Where is nanotechnology going? Nanotechnology is rapidly growing. The number of scientific publications in the field grew from about 200 in 1997 to more than 12,000 in 2002. Despite this, relatively few products using nanoparticles are currently on the market. On the whole, the ones that are already on sale do not address the issues highlighted above of health, food, security, and the environment. Rather, they have focused on consumer applications that include improved sunscreens, crack-resistant paints, and scratch-proof spectacle lenses. Like electricity and the internal combustion engine, nanotechnology is an enabling technology. Involved debate is the way ahead for nanotechnology. The exploitation of matter when it is deliberately structured on the very small scale has the potential to provide huge benefits, just as any useful technology should. It is a real, very broadly based and multidisciplinary area of human endeavor and not just a token epithet that can be applied to the latest research proposal or business venture in an attempt to get it funded. Although admittedly, it is frequently used that way. Certainly, there are issues that should concern us. These can be specific. We need, for example, to understand more about the health and environmental impacts of our uses of nanoparticles. There are also more general concerns. Nanotechnology could provide us with a broad range of capabilities that these should be applied in a thoughtful and responsible manner. However, these are similar to the concerns that might have been applied to any significant technology in the past. The only difference is that we are now in a position to learn from history and try to take action before mistakes are made, but the action should be both proportionate and based on a realistic analysis of the likely risks and benefits of using nanotechnology.